Okay, would you stop the tape, please? Uh, the results to date of this type of attack is we have destroyed uh, more than 70 of these hardened shelters and uh, quite frankly the Iraqi aircraft are running out of places to hide. We now have reports that many of their smaller aircraft, they have moved to roads and hidden them in residential areas that are close to the airfields because they know we're not attacking civilian uh, targets. As you all well know, 89 of their aircraft uh, and I should say these are their frontline F-1s, Mirages, and their MiG-23 uh, Fencers, 89 of them have flown into Iran. The simple fact of the matter is that now, every time an Iraqi airplane takes off the ground, it's running away. As a result, Chuck Horner, my CENTAF commander, has now claimed air supremacy. I'd like to talk a little bit about the isolation of the Kuwaiti Theater of Operations. Uh, one of the ways we do this is by destroying the bridges that lead into the Kuwaiti Theater of Operations area. Next chart, please. We've destroyed, uh, we've targeted a total of 36 bridges. Out of those 36 bridges, we have attacked 33 of them with over 790 sorties. Uh, obviously, by shutting off the bridges, we shut off the supply lines uh, that supply the forces in uh, southern Iraq and in the Kuwaiti Theater of Operations. I'd like to now show you a little film of the destruction of the bridges numbered one, two, three, and four in, in order and uh, give you an idea of what we're talking about. Would you show the video, please? The first video is a railroad bridge. And obviously they have very limited rail lines and when you take a railroad bridge out, it makes a big difference. We try and hit right near the shore, I've been told, because that's the most difficult to repair and does the most damage uh, if you get in at that point. That's one end of the bridge. You'll now see the same bridge again. Notice that's where we hit before, the span's gone. We're now hitting the other end of that railroad bridge. Okay, next we're gonna show you some uh, versions of highway bridges. Uh, you might ask on this next shot why it is that we're hitting the bridge in the middle. The answer is you can see how cloudy it is. The pilot just breaks out of the cloud and doesn't have a lot of time to get his sight on the bridge, so he just puts the sight where he can on the bridge and bombs away. Another type of highway bridge with a different type of abutment structure. Bridge, of course, running this way now. I'm now going to show you a picture of the luckiest man in Iraq on this particular day. Keep your eye on the crosshairs. Right there. Look at here. Right through the crosshairs. And now in his rearview mirror. Okay, stop the tape, please. I'd like to point out a couple of things that are significant about the tapes you've just shown. All those tapes were taken at night. The night is the time when before he moved the most and resupplies the most. You'll notice that on all four of those bridges, you only saw one vehicle. That's another indication of how we're interdicting his supplies. Uh, two days ago, we observed a supply convoy backed up for 15 miles on the road from Baghdad to Basra. It was backed up on the north side of the road right near the bridge that we had knocked out. Obviously, we attacked that convoy and we observed countless secondary explosions when we attacked it. J-STARS and other very sophisticated systems give us a level of measure of just how much damage we're doing to his logistics traffic. This is, uh, over here on this map, excuse me, Roger. This is the main supply route right here that comes down into Kuwait City. In the past, on any given day, in the early part of the campaign, you could look at that main supply route, and at any given time, you'd find about 1,000 trucks on that MSR. Nowadays, whenever we look at it with any of our sophisticated systems, the maximum we find is less than 100. 
That means about a 90-day degradation, a 90% degradation. It's reminding you, it's been a major land battle. In fact, that land battle is still going on. Iraqi forces launched a major offensive on the Saudi border town of Kafji. We expect uh, Major Norman, General Norman Schwarzkopf, whose briefing we're watching at the moment, to uh, address that battle in the moment. But the battle is still going on. Iraqi forces launched a major attack across the border into the Saudi town of Kafji. But at the moment, we'll stay with General Norman Schwarzkopf. We'll have further reports as the morning progresses. Uh, the enemy prisoners of war that we've taken have told us that they're receiving only one meal a day. Uh, that meal generally consists of a bowl of rice or a bowl of beans, and they have no water in which to bathe. And as a result, uh, many of the enemy prisoners of war that we've taken uh, are infested with body lice, and many of them have open sores on their body. I'd like next to come to nuclear, biological, and chemical. Next chart, please. We had 31 uh, targeted locations, and we have attacked all 31 uh, with over 535 sorties, as you can see. We know this is of great interest to the international community, and uh, therefore uh, we were happy to report that we have destroyed all of their nuclear reactor facilities. Baghdad Nuclear Research Center has been leveled to rubble. Precision-guided missiles and TLAM cruise missiles have struck hard at the nuclear, biological, and chemical facilities. As, as have the many aircraft we've shown, over half of them, of those facilities have been severely damaged or totally destroyed. We have absolute conf confirmation that we've destroyed over 11 chemical and biological storage areas, and we've also destroyed or heavily damaged three chemical and biological production facilities, and we're going to continue a relentless attack on this very, very, very uh, heinous uh, weapon system. Let me turn now to the Republican Guard. Uh, we're targeting the Republican Guards with about 300 sorties a day, 300 sorties a day. Uh, we're using very accurate bombing, and even in bad weather, the many secondary explosions are confirming the fact that we're inflicting continuous damage on them. Now, remember, I said 300 sorties a day, but let me give you some examples. On 26 January, 27 B-52s dropped 455 tons of explosive on the Republican Guards. Yesterday, 21 B-52s dropped 470 tons, excuse me, 315 tons of bombs on them, and today 28 B-52s dropped 470 tons on them. That's that was a live briefing. In fact, the briefing is still going on with uh, General Norman Schwarzkopf.